spoke to Emmanuel at his apartment in Brooklyn Heights and was like, I've always wanted to shoot Southern landscapes. Like, what kind of theme can we kind of wrap this around? And so he was like, oh, why not Asians in the deep rural South? One of the narratives that I was very kind of uh, familiar with was the model minority myth. Um, and that is, you know, that Asian Americans kind of overachieve and like that's kind of what we're typecast as. What we were able to see was that a lot of people in the community along the Delta made enormous contributions um, economically in, in the region, whether it be opening grocery stores or whether it be being an, a NASA engineer and creating lunar modules for space missions like Apollo 13. Um, and those are the type of stories that we don't typically hear and those narratives aren't really present in large urban cities. What they say to you, it's like ching ching chang chang. I mean, they really spit on my back. Finally, I got in learning that English. For Steve E. particularly, he uh, went through this harrowing journey of first escaping from China to Hong Kong, and then through Hong Kong, uh, ending up in the Mississippi. And one of the stories that he told us was uh, of just discrimination, um, just a lot of football guys picking on him and him going to the principal to complain about it and the principal telling him to man up and basically stand up for himself, which is, I think, yeah, like it's a very American way of thinking, right? Like you stand up for yourself. But Steve was like, those guys were 200, 250 pounds and he was 100 pounds. There was just no way there was any contest. Um, and I think for him, it, he was kind of fortunate to find art as kind of a way to um, channel his energy. I think sometimes it's hard when you're n not just a minority, but you're like really like 2% of the entire state. They were always kind of in this interesting third position um, where they were discriminated against, not to the full degree that black people were, but they also were not accorded the privilege that white people had. So it was this kind of interesting tension. I think in large urban cities, we're very used to seeing people on the street and be like, oh, there's another Asian American person. Cool, like you're not really phased by it. But I think when you're in the South, especially along the Mississippi Delta and more of those rural pockets, um, whenever you see another Asian, you're like, wow, that's a, like, our families probably have some sort of tie and we're probably united on some type of front. So I think that level of kind of community um, where everyone just really knows each other is very insane. Some of the families you spoke with are elderly or in their, their later years. If you didn't tell this story, it's possible that no one would hear it, you know, outside, right. of, outside of the immediate families that, you know, exist in their, in their own lives. Right. Why is it important for you guys to tell those stories? A lot of the younger generation are moving outside of the Mississippi Delta as they seek better opportunities. A lot of them go to Texas, California, Memphis, you know, Tennessee, and all these other states other states um, and there's just a handful of um, these older generations that are left and once you know they pass on it is possible that there might not be that many Chinese Americans left in that area and I think it's super important to understand that they had entire lives there that were very meaningful and they were able to serve uh, an even like more underappreciated community back then and I think it's so important to to capture that before you know we lose it